Well, community media groups are accusing the telecom giant AT&T of discriminating against local public access channels across the country, and the deadline for public comment is midnight tonight. The dispute centers around how AT&T delivers public television stations to customers. Instead of putting the stations on individual channels, AT&T has bundled community stations into a generic channel that can only be navigated through a complex and lengthy process. Public television advocates say AT&T is imposing unfair restrictions that will severely restrict audiences. The groups have filed a regulatory challenge against AT&T with the Federal Communications Commission. And a House Appropriations Subcommittee has also asked the FCC to look into the allegations. A public comment period ends at midnight tonight. Uh, that's Eastern Standard Time. I'm joined now by three guests who've been active in seeking fair access for community media. Joining me from Chicago is a public access icon. She's Barbara Popovich. She's executive director of Chicago Access Corporation, known as can TV. Joining me on the telephone from Palo Alto, California, is Annie Folger. She's executive director of the Mid Peninsula Community Media Center, serving the Bay Area. And on the line from Sacramento, California, is Sue Buskey. She's president of the Buskey Group, which is a Sacramento based telecommunications consulting firm. Sue is also the former head of the National Federation of Local Cable Programmers, now known as the Alliance for Community Media. We did ask representatives of AT&T to appear on the broadcast, but they didn't respond to our request. Uh, Barbara Popovich, let's begin with you. Um, I think the way legislation often gets passed is that it's so complicated no one really understands it. Can you talk about what it is you're so concerned about right now? Well, you know, when I got ready to come in to do the show this morning, I looked on your website for Democracy Now! and saw the stations that this program plays in Illinois, for example. I wanted to let a few people know. And it was very simple. Channel 19, Channel 6. I mean, this is what people have come to expect. Someone who is a UVerse customer now picks up a program guide like this. They see 350 odd channels and not a single public channel is listed. Explain That's what one you mean so many it, of the it, deficits Barbara, of this it, system. Barbara, can you explain what you mean by UVerse? Well, um, AT&T has started a new system it, it calls UVerse, and this has all kinds of bells and whistles so that when people go to watch a program, AT&T on its own website advertises things like fast channel change, easy access to a program guide. Sadly, though, none of those benefits are available for these public channels. People have come to expect to be able to do a simple thing like channel surf between a broadcast channel, a public channel, whatever they wish to see, to do a DVR recording when they go off to work during the day. 30% of the population now rely on DVR recordings in order to be able to watch the program they want to see. None of these benefits are available on um, UVerse, on uh, AT&T's new product for television viewers for public access channels. And this is a grave concern for educators, government entities, for the emergency alerts that those cities put out, for local residents who want to communicate for democracy now, for that matter, to reach the people you're reaching every day. So this is really a very inferior system. And for the first time in the history of PEG access, it, it's a clearly discriminatory decision to put these channels in an inferior format in every way that matters to a viewer. Uh, Consumer Rights Board, the California Public Utilities Commission Division of Ratepayer Advocates, put together a video on how difficult it is to access a community television station under the AT&T system. Normally, a TV viewer can switch from channel to channel, as you said, Barbara. But as this video shows, switching to a public station with AT&T takes over a minute, if you can figure it out. AT&T has chosen to group all community channels on channel 99. So the first thing that you would have to do is select channel 99. As you can see in the lower screen, we're waiting for further instructions. It says OK. Now it's uh, loading the uh, 
public access platform. As you can see, it's a computer-based application. Okay, once we get to the channel 99 menu, if you notice, all the communities are listed in alphabetical order. We wanna watch the City of San Francisco Board of Education meeting. So we reach San Francisco local government channels. Then another menu shows the four channels available. Okay, you can wait for the preview screen to show. There we go. So as you can see, it took a minute and five seconds to go from a commercial channel to San Francisco uh, Board of Supervisors meeting. Um, normally, it would have taken a second or two to select the specific channel that your cable provider has assigned for that particular uh, government channel. That was Mike Greer, a community activist. Now, Barbara Popovich, that took a very long time. That's what you have to go through every time you want to turn the channel? You do, and the length will vary, and AT&T will argue that it's going to be shorter than that, but the problem is the complexity, like you mentioned, Amy. People are going to have to have a little manual, I think, to find these programs. And when you think that these are educators, we've got eight HIV AIDS agencies, four domestic violence agencies. These are people that need immediate access to their audience, not to be shunted aside, moved off, uh, out of reach, uh, like one of our educators said, out of sight, out of mind for this programming.